Hi, today I am going to show you how to connect Raspberry Pi to the laptop or desktop device without any HDMI cable or Ethernet cable. Uh, the things you will require for this is a Raspberry Pi 3B, a micro SD card. Here I am using 8GB micro SD card and a micro SD card adapter for connecting it to the laptop and a smartphone for making a hotspot. In a hotspot network will bring Raspberry Pi and laptop on the same network. So let's begin by downloading Raspbian OS. So Google it up, Raspbian OS download. And the first link will be the official website of Raspberry Pi. So go there. Here I am choosing Raspbian OS. And now you will see three options. The first is Raspbian Stretch with desktop GUI and also it contains some recommended softwares. The second is Raspbian OS with desktop GUI. And the last one is the lightest version of all. It contains just the OS. It does not have desktop GUI. In this video, I am going with Raspbian Stretch with desktop GUI. So click on download and uh, I think it's pretty big download. You have 1GB around. So it might take some time. So complete the download and I'll see you then. Okay, by the time OS is getting downloaded, let me show you how to format the SD card properly. So head over to Google and type in SD card formatter. And you will see the first link sdcard.org. Go there. Now scroll below and choose the appropriate operating system. I am having Windows 10 64 bit. So I am going with Windows download. Okay, okay. Where is the download button? Yeah, accept. Yes, it is small, just 6 MB. Alright, the download is complete now. So, head over to the folder and extract it. Alright, so now you see the setup. Run as administrator. Yes, run. And it is just the normal procedure of any installation. Follow this. Next. I accept. Next. Install. So, yes, it is installed. Now launch the program. Yeah. So, this is the SD card formatter. I hope you have plugged in the SD card. So the default options are fine. Make sure that you select the memory card drive, not the other drive. So I have 8 GB SD card and I'm selecting quick format, volume label we boot, it's fine. And click on format. Yes. So our memory card is ready. And now I'm just waiting for download to finish. After it finishes, I'll show you how to load the operating system in our memory card. Right. So Raspbian OS download is complete for me. Now before we proceed, I'll show you the things we require. The first one is Etcher. We will write operating system into SD card with the help of Etcher. The second one is Advanced IP Scanner. We will scan IP address of Raspberry Pi with the help of it. And the third one is Putty. We will use Putty for doing SSH. And the fourth one is VNC Viewer. We will use VNC Viewer to, to see the Raspberry Pi desktop. So let's get all of them one by one. So proceed to Google and type in Etcher. Head over to this link. And it will try to detect your operating system automatically. But uh, we need the portable version of Etcher. So according to your operating system, select the portable version. And it will begin downloading. I have already downloaded it. Next thing is we need Putty. So go to putty.org, click here and we don't need installer. We just need the portable version of Putty. I am going for 64 bit. Again, I have already downloaded it. And the next one is advanced IP scanner. 
go to this URL. Click on free download. I've already downloaded it. And the last one is VNC Viewer. VNC Viewer. Okay. Go to realvnc.com. First link. And depending upon your operating system, select either of these standalone setups. So I am going for 64 bit. Download VNC Viewer. All right, so I guess we are ready with all the things we require. So let's burn the operating system into our memory card. So open up Etcher. It might take a bit to open Etcher at first. So Etcher is open. The first thing is selecting the zip file we have downloaded the operating system here it is open it has automatically detected the 8 gb sd card i have plugged in and you click on flash yes it might take around 20 to 15 minutes so be patient okay so hr has flashed the operating system into the memory card so you might have seen this dialog box as well click on cancel close this now there are two things you need to do um, head over to this pc and in case you don't find your sd card just re-plug it and you might see the boot partition over there mm. and go to the boot partition now right click new and select text document now just re rename it to ssh if you don't see this extension txt click over to view and check this box file name extension so now we need to remove this extension yes so having made the SSH file, now we are going to do the most crucial part. Go ahead to your smartphone and turn on the hotspot. So I have turned the hotspot on and the Wi-Fi name is EduPark for me. You just note down your Wi-Fi name and the password. And uh, we need to copy this file to the SD card after some addition. I uploaded this file to the Google Drive and you can find the link in the description below. So open this file after downloading it and put your Wi-Fi hotspot name over here. It is case sensitive. So be careful with it. Let me just check it. Yeah, P is capital and K is small. Okay. And the password is just put in your password and Wi-Fi name. Save it. And copy this file to the boot partition. What it will do is, it will automatically help Raspberry Pi to connect your phone's hotspot. So remove this, close this, and eject your boot partition. So having done that, plug in your memory card to the Raspberry Pi and power on the Raspberry Pi with the USB cable. Just use the laptop's USB port. Right. So allow it up to 20 seconds to boot up. And in meantime, keep your uh, softwares ready which you have downloaded earlier. The first thing we would require is the advanced IP scanner. Just run as administrator. Yes. We don't want to install it. We'll just run it in portable mode. This one, run portable version. And click on run. Uh, before you do that, the important part is connect your laptop to the hotspot you created with your smartphone. This is important. You need to bring your laptop and the Raspberry Pi into the same network. That is the whole logic behind. So now we need to get the base address 
the part of IP address. So click on Windows R and CMD. Open the command prompt and type in IP config. Make sure you have connected to the hotspot of your phone and after typing in IP config in the command prompt, you see the IP address allocate, allocated to this laptop. So note it down. Um, it is 192.168.43. In your case, it might be different. Dot 171. So the only change we will see is the last bit. Raspberry Pi will have this last bit different from the one we got for the laptop. So copy this. Control C. Save. And paste it over here. And in place of the last bit, type in 1 dash 2 254. So what it will do is it will scan all the IP address mapping from 1 to 254, the last bit, and now hit on scan. So now hopefully, yeah, so it got the Raspberry Pi IP address. Now you have the IP address. That was the most important part of this video. And now you just copy the IP address. See, you got the IP address of your laptop device and you got the IP address of Raspberry Pi. So copy the IP address and now open the putty. Yes, run it and paste the IP address. Set the port to 222. Click on SSH and only on clean exit. Rest all is fine. Hit open. Yeah. So you are there. This was the this was the most crucial part, uh, which many of us failed to do. But now with this uh, setup, we can do it very easily with the help of smartphones or hotspot. And one more point I would like to make is. Uh, after you turn on the hotspot, I would recommend you also turn on the internet of your smartphone. Uh, without internet also it, will, it would work. But uh, I suggest you turn on the internet and the hotspot both. And connect your laptop to the same network. And with the help of the this file which we had copied earlier to the Raspberry Pi. It would, it would help Raspberry Pi to automatically connect to this network. So... I guess uh, now we are done. The default username is Pi and the default password is Raspberry. I have included all the details in the description. You can check it there. Yes, see you got here. Now sudo raspi config. Now go to localizations. No, not local interfacing options and click on SSH. Hit on SSH and yes, enable it. So that's it. And the one more thing you might want to do is enable the VNC viewer. VNC server, yes. Okay. So having done that, go to finish. I just use the tab key. I'll show you again. Uh, if you hit the tab key, it will go down. Again, if you hit the tab key, it will go to finish. Click on enter. Now you close the putty. Okay. Now head over to VNC viewer. Since we have enabled the VNC server, uh, yes, okay. Now just paste the IP address of Raspberry Pi you just got from Advanced IP Scanner. And since you have enabled the VNC server, you will be able to see, you will be able to connect to Raspberry Pi now. Click enter and yeah, continue. There you are, you got the desktop of Raspberry Pi. And yes, it is asking for changing the default password. It's okay. You know, don't need to change. Next. Uh, country is India. They have India. Okay. Let it be United Kingdom for now. Okay. You use US keyboard. Next. Um, password. I will enter the new password. You can choose whatever you want. I'm just going with the default password again. Next. Skip. Skip. Reboot. Yeah, it wants to reboot. No, not an issue. So now again, it will automatically connect to the same network of your phone. 
सो जस्ट बी पेशेंट वेट अप टू ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी सेकेंड्स इट विल रिबोट दी ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम ऑफ रासबेरी पाई एंड वंस इट इज डन ट्राई टू रिकनेक्ट इट विद दी हेल्प ऑफ सेम आई पी एड्रेस आई गेस इफ इट डजेंट कनेक्ट या इट इज कनेक्टेड सो ओके सी दिस इज दी वाई फाई एड हॉटस्पॉट विच विच इज फ्रॉम द स्मार्ट फोन एंड दैट इज हाउ यू कनेक्ट टू रासबेरी पाई If this helped you please subscribe my channel and I'll see you next time with uh, how to set up the static IP address of Raspberry Pi so you don't need to scan the IP address each and every time you connect so thank you